Hey guys, my name's Sam and welcome to PrepMedic. This week's video, we are reviewing the Duration Health Med Kit, and it's not a typical life hack. If the 2020s have taught us nothing else, it's that supply chain is not guaranteed and pharmaceuticals are no exception. As someone whose wife takes levothyroxine every day to stay alive and someone who travels a lot and spends time in the backwoods, I am pretty intrigued with Duration Health's medical kit. So in general, this kit is a box of prescription and over-the-counter medications that can be used in both acute and subacute instances where you don't have access to traditional medical care or your regular physicians. Now, the use case for this is twofold. Number one is travel. If you're in another country and either they don't have pharmacies that you can use or they don't have a good healthcare infrastructure in general, you can maybe get in contact with your physician, get a prescription for something like azithromycin, but if you don't have access to it, it's useless. That's where this kit enters. You can use this, you can take it as your doctor prescribes it to you, but you use your own supply of medication. The second thought behind this kit is off the grid travel exploration, where you might not have access to a physician in general. You don't have any telehealth options. And that's where a field guide that they supply comes in. You can go through this. This will walk you through uh, how to treat whatever ailment you have. Now, before anybody starts getting up in arms about a kit that has antibiotics in it, we will talk about antibiotic stewardship as we go uh, through this bag and talk about everything that's inside it. So how do you go about getting this kit? So the first step in this kit is you go online and you look at what the general options are. They do have a basic kit. That kit runs about $300 to $350. And that kit will come with a couple antibiotics. It will come uh, with some Zofran and some things that are just generally useful in those environments. But as you go online, you order this kit, you will actually have a meeting with a physician on Zoom. And I thought this was going to be a very cursory meeting that was pretty low level, but it was actually really, really good. Uh, and they spent about an hour with me, a half hour to an hour, just walking through what medical issues I have, what I've experienced in the past, and what activities I'm planning to do. And they basically add and take away medications. Now granted, anything they add will come with an extra cost on the kit but they're really trying to look at what your lifestyle is. Hey, do you need medications for malaria because you're going down to Africa for a trip? Are you doing high altitude things, looking for dexamethasone? Are you doing a lot of high risk activities and you're anaphylactically allergic to bees yet you're a beekeeper, we'll give you EpiPens, like that kind of thing. So they will walk through all of that and then they will write you a script for everything that they feel you need in this kit. One of the big things that they go through is antibiotics. So antibiotics, while not usually that dangerous for an individual taking them, they can cause huge global issues and we're actually seeing that right now. So antibiotic stewardship is a really big deal. Even right now in the United States, I believe it's something like one to two out of four antibiotic prescriptions are made inappropriately. Everybody goes in to their family practice physician when they have a virus asking for antibiotics, even though that's not what they do. So that was actually a huge part of this meeting is discussing when we use antibiotics and when we don't use antibiotics. And it's really important not to abuse them. If you start antibiotics, it's really important to continue it till the end of it. Because if you half kill a bacteria in your body and you don't continue it, it looks at that antibiotic that you gave it and it's going to learn from it. And that's how we create super bugs that go around the world that we can no longer treat. There are actually uh, biological organisms that we cannot treat because we have abused antibiotics so much. So I can't stress the importance of being uh, really careful with the use of these. And I would highly recommend that you have a doctor prescribing this before taking it. So that out of the way, let's go through the kit, talk about some of the things that were included in mine, understanding that there's a lot more you can get, or you can get a little bit more of a pared down kit, uh, depending on what your needs are. So first and foremost, we have the bags they come in. So you got this big one. Um, it's a little bit bulky, especially for travel when you know, you're going flying frontier and they only allow you a little personal item. Uh, this is basically your personal item there, but you can also pay a little bit extra and get this smaller kit. However, I noticed it doesn't really fit everything that came in this. So you might have to pick and choose uh, what you're using depending on 
what uh, your situation is. The front pocket here, we have our main pills and everything there. We've got the EpiPens I have, all of that. And then the second one's where I keep the OTC and the uh, field guide. There's definitely room for adding your own prescriptions if you have something you take daily that they're not giving you in this kit. So we're gonna start uh, kind of down here and we'll work our way up into the little bit more complex medications. So I am mildly allergic to bees. I've had continuing reactions over time. So every time I've been stung, I used to do tree work in high school, it gets a little bit worse. Uh, they have a pretty low threshold for prescribing EpiPens because EpiPens are something that are given to a lot of people and the dose is really consistent. Uh, regardless of your size. Uh, the only real difference is pediatric or adult. So I have two EpiPens included in here. These are great for the acute anaphylactic reaction, and these are really a life-saving med, an immediately life-saving med. Um, and this is kind of your acute reaction. So we have two of them in here because you can have rebound reactions there. The dose of these is 0.3 milligrams, and it's just an auto injector into the leg. Now these are prescribed to individuals, so this is prescribed to me and me alone. However, like I just said, the dose is pretty universal. So if your buddy forgot their EpiPen, I'm not officially recommending this, but I will tell you that this would work just as well as their EpiPen if they don't have one or if you come across somebody else with an anaphylactic reaction, just be aware that you are opening yourself up for litigation in that uh, sense. The second thing we have in here is an albuterol inhaler. Once again, albuterol, they have a pretty low threshold pre for prescribing it. I have mild asthma. Um, I had some pneumothoraces in high school, which they attributed to kind of having this chronic underlying asthma. So once again, low threshold for prescribing it. I have an albuterol inhaler here. And it's the same medication, same dose across uh, these er, across these inhalers. So if you come across somebody having an asthma attack, guess what? This is going to work for them. Once again, not officially recommending it. All right, so in here, we have something that would have been really handy to have during my wife's uh, last pregnancy because she was uh, throwing up daily. Uh, we have Odansetron. So this is uh, Zofran. This is a multiple tablet under your tongue that helps with nausea and vomiting. Comes with a pretty large blister pack. I haven't counted them, but there's quite a lot in it. Now, the uh, next thing and kind of the first like less mundane prescription medication, triamcinolone. So this is basically a topical steroid, essentially for acute dermatitis. It's something to be used, you know, if you get really into some nasty poison ivy or you're having a localized allergic reaction, you can rub this on the area. And it's basically a really strong hydrocortisone cream. Uh, should be used relatively sparingly, however. All right, so up here we have more of our pills and prescriptions. So here I have amoxicillin. So amoxicillin is used to treat a variety of different infections. This is a pretty broad spectrum antibiotic and we use it to treat bite wounds. So, you know, bit by a cat or, uh, heaven forbid, a human, ear infections, sinus infections, tooth infections. So these infections, while easily treated in the first world or where you have hospitals and clinics, can get pretty serious out in the middle of nowhere or in another country. So amoxicillin is a pretty broad spectrum antibiotic once again, prescribed to me. And the booklet that they give you has all of the instructions for use. So it gives you the most common dosing regimen, which is pretty universal for all these meds, which is why they're able to do this prescription model. Um, it will also tell you when not to use it. So it goes through indications and contraindications of the medication. Now, down here we have azithromycin. So once again, this is another antibiotic. And azithromycin is usually used in place of penicillin medications when they have an allergy to it. And this is usually used to treat respiratory infections such as pneumonia, abdominal infections, ear infections, strep throat. Uh, I will say that this is oftentimes inappropriately prescribed for people with um, upper respiratory viruses. Uh, because they kind of just go to this for potential pneumonia instead of really trying to dig into it. So this is a medication of abuse, believe it or not. All right, next in the list, we have dexamethasone. So dexamethasone is not actually an antibiotic, and this one's kind of an interesting one. It was really cool that they kept this in here. So this dexamethasone is a steroid, and it can be used in a lot of respiratory issues. Um, you can use this in allergic reactions. You can use this in... Uh, asthma, but the reason it's in this kit is actually for treatment of acute mountain sickness, 
um, high altitude pulmonary edema and high altitude cerebral edema. And it can be used to treat all of those things. It can also be used prophylactically for that if somebody is going up to a really high altitude. So it's kind of cool that's included in here. What I like about dexamethasone is it is very broad spectrum. You can use it for a lot of different things and has a lot of different uses. Once again, dosing is pretty standard across the board. So moving on to the next one, we have uh, doxycycline. So doxycycline, once again, it's another antibiotic. And I'm guessing somebody's watching this going like, oh, I thought all antibiotics were the same. Antibiotics treat different things and they treat them in different ways. So while they're all very similar, they all treat bacterial infections, that doesn't mean that they all work just as well for every ailment. So doxycycline is used to treat Lyme disease, bubonic plague, which believe it or not is still a thing. It's carried in uh, uh, groundhogs a lot of times. So if you see them, don't pick them up. And we actually have really high rates of bubonic plague uh, in Colorado. And actually I, I know somebody that died of it. So it's treatable with antibiotics, but finding out they have it in time is the hard part because doctors aren't usually looking for it. So it can also be used to treat tularemia um, and it can be used for malaria prophylaxis. So this is a pretty versatile medication to have in here. All right, this next one is ofloxacin and this is an antibiotic for ear and eye infections. So like uh, pink eye, things like that. You can use this, you can drop it in your ear, you can drop it uh, in your eye. But like every other antibiotic in here, this is something that you have to do regularly and you have to finish the regimen. So that is in this case, and once again, pretty useful. Last but not least up here, we have prednisone. So prednisone is a steroid. No, it's not an anabolic steroid. It's not gonna make you huge and buff. Uh, but this is used to treat uh, airway inflammation and other uh, acute asthma and allergic reactions. So this is not like your mainstay treatment. This isn't the immediately life-threatening med. This is something you can take that will start onset in an hour or two after you ingest it. So just be aware of that. The inhaler and the EpiPens are the really acute treatments uh, for these life-threatening issues. So that's really what we have in the top. And you're honestly, you're gonna be underwhelmed by everything in the bottom of the case here. But down here we have diphenhydramine. So this is Benadryl. Now, Benadryl is oftentimes used for, you know, you, you have hives, you have itchiness, you have discomfort. Benadryl is great for that. Can also be used as a sleep aid, although that's not really recommended a lot of times because you can increase dependence. Uh, over time. This is not life-saving uh, and we give it on the ambulance. We give it IV and IM. Uh, we can also give it orally, but this is not something that's going to save somebody from an anaphylactic reaction. Uh, there's been a lot of studies that this is not life-saving. So EpiPen's mainstay of treatment, but you can follow that up with um, 25 to 50 milligrams of Benadryl to help kind of ease that discomfort uh, and help the epinephrine work a little bit. And down here we have two things. We have lopramide, antidiarrheal. So Diarrhea is a big deal, especially in the backwoods where you can become dehydrated relatively quickly, and this can actually cause you some major issues, and we have Tylenol as well. Uh, obviously, they're dangerous to Tylenol. Don't take too much of it, um, but it's just kind of for your minor pain. Obviously, there's no narcotics in this kit. That There's not going to be any kit you can get commercially that has narcotics because those are a super controlled substance. So the last thing we have, and I brought this out a little bit earlier, is their field guide. So this guide basically walks you through how to treat a variety of different ailments, and it also has an information page on each of their medications. I think the only thing I would like to see in here, I would like to see a little bit more detailed information of each of the meds. They give a layperson synopsis of it, which is great, but I would like to see a little bit more technical uh, writing and terminology going into it. I think that would be... Uh, super helpful. But all in all, it's a pretty comprehensive book. Uh, it even talks about things like CPR and stuff like that. It's not just the medications in this kit. So we talked about it a little bit earlier. Let's talk about it again. Price on this, the basic kit, which comes with the medications I'll throw up on the screen, costs about $350. You can get a discount from my stuff, but it's generally $300 to $350. Uh, you can get things added to it and taken away. And the shelf life of these kits, uh, they say a year. So everything in here will basically last you at least 12 months. There are a couple that will last you a little bit longer and they will send you an email and send you specific replacements for the meds that expire when they expire. So they're tracking that for you. That being said, this is quite the investment for something that expires over time. 
Uh, it's not an official recommendation. You won't find any healthcare provider saying, yes, it's absolutely okay. Uh, but all of these meds will be good past their expiration date most of the time. Uh, there are some exceptions. As long as you're storing this in temperature-controlled environments, you're not uh, putting this in super humid uh, places or temperature extremes, both high and low. So you could keep these medications a little bit longer. Generally speaking, though, the shelf life is one year. In the future, I do want to make a short about some of these medications and antibiotics because I do think that is something that's really important that a lot of people don't know or don't understand. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments down below, and I will see you next week.